Halo MCC Season 8 release this Wednesday, along with a way to earn a special nameplate. Major changes coming to Halo Waypoint, which actually does affect Halo 5 and Halo Wars 2 content. Halo Infinite event sells out, as well as the game out trending COD and Battlefield. Ranked slash competitive settings are being revealed this week, and an insane world record sniper drill in Halo Infinite that you guys gotta watch. That and a whole lot more, so stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here. I'm bringing you another episode of Last Week in Halo, the show that keeps you updated with everything going on with Halo. I know not everyone can catch up with the news as soon as it happens, so this is a weekly recap of everything happened in the past week to keep you guys up to date. We release these episodes every Monday morning, so if you guys want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So the first bit of news that happened this week was that Halo Waypoint is getting a massive update. So massive, in fact, that they actually had to kind of cut some features to make room for some new ones. And a blog posted on Halo Waypoint showcases exactly what we're gonna be looking at here when it comes to new features and removing features on Halo Waypoint. For the TLDR, access the Halo Waypoint news feed to ensure you're up to date with all the latest news, or you can just subscribe to the channel. Ability to customize your Spartan in Halo Infinite using all the customization options you've unlocked. The ability to check out the service record for Halo Infinite, MCC, and Halo 5. Notice the missing Halo Wars 2, we'll get into that in a minute. Various graphs and stat tracking, the ability to keep track of your battle pass progression, keep track of your challenges as well within Halo Infinite, and also just unifying the experience across mobile and web. So in this blog update, it's announced that Halo Waypoint V Next is arriving November 1st. So next month, guys, we're getting a big Big change to Halo Waypoint. And remember how I said some features are not going to be making it back into Halo Waypoint, what they mentioned right here, even though they rebuilt a lot about the way Waypoint works, not everything could be rebuilt. Things like Halo 5 sparring companies, browsing for Halo 5 user generated content, and Halo Wars 2 service record, the universe section, and some older articles are not going to be making it when the update goes live. Now to be clear when it comes to your user generated content, they say we heard that Halo 5's user generated content will be unaffected in game to be clear. But the waypoint interface to browse your Halo 5 game variants, map variants, and forge object groups will no longer be available. Now I know there's some die-hard Halo Wars 2 fans, and yeah, I can understand you guys being a little upset that your surface record's not making it with the update. Essentially what they said, they had to make some prioritization and had to make some trade-offs, and that's why Halo Wars 2 isn't making it with Waypoint V next. Though the Halo Wars 2 API and third-party services remain unaffected and the data will continue to flow. So you might have to use some third-party websites if you want to check your Halo Wars 2 stats. Now here we're going to take a look at the app that's actually being updated as well along with Halo Waypoint. This is going to be a major point that's going to help you out with your experience when playing Halo Infinite. We can see right here on the app that you have Halo Infinite, Halo 5, as well as MCC and they also show Fireteam Raven coming soon. Which again is kind of weird. You have Fireteam Raven in the app right here but not Halo Wars 2. I'm sure many of you are concerned about Halo Infinite so you select your Halo Infinite in the game right here and then if you want to check out like your companion right here you select that and you get to check out various things like your progression through the battle pass right here you can, you can actually activate xp boost you can spend xp grants as well you can keep track of your progression through the battle pass right here and also obviously with season zero i was able to grind my way throughout the entirety of all 30 levels of the battle pass here so that's one way to keep track of everything we can also check out our customization right here for halo infinite now, i'm using a samsung s9 so it might load up a little bit slower than maybe if you guys are getting some new phones this fall but you can actually check out your custom you can change things on the fly like hey I don't like this helmet anymore I like the trailblazer helmet I'll double click on that and now I've updated my Spartan to have this stuff in kind of armor set I can select a different kind of coatings that will load in right here and go like um I like this one more double click that and now my Spartan has a different coating on it as well that'll show up in game continuing on with the customization when you click on appearance you can choose your body type your limbs and also your AI model as well which is super cool because uh well I actually kind of like mixing around whoever I get to play with my AI character. Then we can check out our profile here and you say you can manage your Halo Insider profile right here and you can also even redeem codes which have been coming around quite often. There's currently that Rockstar promotion which grants you weapon skins as well as double XP on top of the Kellogg's promotion as well. Instead of going to the Halo Waypoint website you can do the redeem the codes right there on the app. And of course you can check out your other games like I'm going to check out my MCC stats right here. Go to progression right here and you can see where I'm kind of sitting right now when it comes to season 7. I can see the various objects that I have unlocked right here, no problem. I haven't really spent my season points on season seven because I don't really care to customize my elite. Uh, you can check out your career stats within 
MCC as well, which is super great. You can check out my multiplayer stats right here. Exposed, I'm not that great at the game. Interesting thing about my account that when I first had to log into my account, I had a default picture of like what looked like to be like an armor core of just like the Master Chief armor core. So could that possibly be available within the customization of the first season of Halo Infinite? I mean, that would be pretty sick. I've always wanted to be like Master Chief within the multiplayer. You might be able to pull that off. We'll just have to wait and see. Now on to our next bit of news that's happening this Wednesday, guys. We have the brand Brand new season for MCC season eight. This season is going to be absolutely massive, possibly the biggest season that we've had since crossplay coming back in November to the MCC. There are so many great features and bits of customization that we're going to be talking about within this update when it goes live on Wednesday. So make sure you subscribe to the channel guys to catch when that news goes live. But it seems like everything that we tested out in season eight's flight is not actually going to be able to make it for the release of the season. So I wanted to recap that with you guys here. Now, I've recapped everything that's in these details right here, guys. But if you want to catch everything, I'm going to kind of skim over the most important parts. But if you want to know everything, check out the videos on the channel here. But the biggest things coming in, guys, is, of course, is the customization with the, all the new armor sets with the mythic armor sets coming in with Season 8, guys. These are very much like outlandish armor sets that actually do look pretty cool, not going to lie. You have huge changes coming for the custom game browser with the addition of Combat Evolved and Halo 3 as well. And on top of that, we're getting additional updates for filters, search options, and as overall overall improvements to the create, browse, and session detail page for the custom game browser. So you gain a massive update there. Getting some weapon offsets for all the games within the MCC. File share finally coming for PC, which is huge for me as a PC player. Steam account linking, which actually has been helping me out so much, especially with Halo Infinite, where actually sometimes we're like the UI just doesn't work for sending invites in game for some reason. But if you do it through Steam, usually it works just fine. We're also getting a brand new map for Halo 3 Icebox right here, which is a remake of Halo 2's Turf coming into the game as well, guys. I have a video doing some visual comparisons. If you guys want to see that one, it's on the channel here. I had a chance to play around with this a bit. It basically just plays like Turf. It's a great map. Can't wait to play it in the MCC. I'm sure the big update you guys are really concerned about is the Flood coming in for Halo 3 ODST Firefight, but it seems like there's going to be a little bit of a catch when it comes to the addition of the Flood. Or it sounds like you have to wait a little bit longer for the Flood, as well as Elites, staying right here in the previous blog update, saying the Flood and Elite enemy types present in the flight won't be part of the Season 8 release. But don't worry they'll be joining the firefight soon enough. But one of the new enemy types, the Sentinels, will be present day one of the new season. There are also some major changes happening to Halo 2 Classic as well, guys. So Halo 2 is getting some love with this season. One thing is changing the lighting and some of the cinematics to make it more in parody with the originals, as well as getting pretty much the season seven Halo CE treatment of Halo 2 classic textures and butt map fixes to bring it closer to alignment in the original Xbox. Again, I've covered all these details in previous video, guys, so please go check them out if you want to know everything coming in with Season 8. Or just subscribe to the channel when that update goes live on Wednesday. Now, there is a way for you to earn some very special nameplates for Season 8 as well, guys. There's going to be a grassroots play day, essentially play against grassroots partners. If you beat them, you earn these nameplates right here. So we have the Globetrotter nameplate. We also have this really sweet Elite Spartan one. If this is animated, I will definitely rock this for sure. We also have the Hog Wild nameplay on top of that as well. And before we get into the Halo Infinite news, a word from our sponsor, Vite Ramen. Vite Ramen is a small US based company that provides a far more tasty, fulfilling, and more importantly, healthier option than your typical ramen brands. In less than three minutes, one packet of Vite Ramen gives you more food than the leading ramen brands, 25% of your daily micronutrients, up to 30 grams of protein, 7 grams of dietary fiber, and most importantly to me, 50% less sodium to help you live a healthier lifestyle. Where the leading brand is really just salt and carbs. Vite Ramen also has vegan plant-based versions as well. My favorite is the Sichuan Chili, as it actually packs a punch of heat along with a filling bowl of ramen. I mean, look at me. Isn't that the face of satisfaction right there? And why give your money to the corporate overlords We can help out a small business? So check out the link in the pinned comment and also in the description of this video to give Vite Ramen a look over. And thank you very much, Vite Ramen, for sponsoring this video. So next on the Halo docket, guys, we have some Halo Infinite news as we, of course, we always do every week now. We have some interesting stories of how your kill death ratio is actually calculated in the game. It's not so straightforward. We have a cannon fodder that was released. Halo Infinite actually gets more viewers than Fortnite and possibly another flight or at least before, maybe after the release of the game. 
Well, let's take a look at it. In a recent Kotaku article goes into about how your kill death assist ratio is actually calculated within the game because it's not so straightforward. And it seems like assists actually count as kills for your overall stats. Stating right here the same as Halo 5 Guardians, lead multiplayer designer Andrew Witz told Kotaku that it's kills plus assists divided by three minus deaths all together that's how you get your kill death assist ratio. And to clarify that, yes, an assist counts as one third of a kill. Now, some people might look at that going like, why are you granting these people kills for actually not getting the kill? Well, in Halo, it's a little different. Assists actually really do showcase how much you're helping out your team. It's not really like, oh, you weren't able to finish off that kill like it is in Battlefield or Call of Duty. Getting a ton of assists in Halo actually showcases that you're a really much of a team player and you definitely should be rewarded statistically to showcase like, yes, I am more active within the game. I'm a better player than some other ones out there just to kind of showcase your stats and stuff like that. So I'm glad to see Halo Fit stats getting some love to some assists. Now technically this did happen a couple weeks ago but I missed it in last week so I'm bringing it in this week. And that is a brand new cannon fodder that provides more lore, more background to a lot of the items within Halo Infinite as well. Even providing some additional lore for like fragmentation here. We got some more for Behemoth as well and some other kind of great stuff going throughout this entire thing. If you guys are lore fans like myself, it's definitely a fun read to go through. Like for example, fragmentation, it seems to kind of have some implications to possibly like a fast travel kind of system within Halo Infinite's campaign, saying set within one of Zeta Halo's myriad canyons, fragmentation is rife with enigmatic elements to take in and mull over. From ancient artifacts and nebulous nodes to networked beacons channeling untold energies, this map is one to add plenty of wonder to the wander. Now, why do I talk about a fast travel option? Well, first of all, the campaign missions and map of the world of Zeta Halo is absolutely massive. And talking about nodes to networked beacons Beacons channeling untold energies. To me, this kind of sounds like something special beyond just like the bases that we saw in Fragmentation that emit like this really strong beacon. These things are brand new to Halo, and it seems like they might have some kind of form of like this networking that means they're interconnected, which possibly like some kind of traveling system. I don't know, tinfoil hat theory right there for you guys, but I think that would be really cool to see within the world of Zeta Halo. Next, I'm going to go into how interested the gaming community as a whole is with Halo Infinite. This Forbes article showcases a very interesting graph for here where if you take a look at it where it shows halo infinite out trending battlefield 2042 and even call of duty as well this is quite huge for the halo community just because people are interested in halo that was my biggest concern when it comes to having like a tried and true halo game kind of like we're getting with halo infinite is that are people still excited about like an arena shooter playing halo which can be a little bit more difficult or people just want to play Battle Royale. Well, from playing these betas, a lot of people are saying that the Halo Infinite beta was definitely the best out of the three, and people are very much interested in Halo, which is great to see. The Twitter account of Modern Warzone, which does mainly Call of Duty news, actually talks about how they think that Halo Infinite will be the best multiplayer this fall. And even stating that bluntly that it doesn't really line up with me being a COD chill, but after playing all three betas, Halo Infinite felt above and beyond the best multiplayer. And I guess people were feeling the same because there's a screenshot right here showcasing Halo Infinite with more viewers than Fortnite. For those people looking to upgrade their bookshelves, guys, we have a Master Chief versus Ashram diorama that's recently gone on sale for $470, which is kind of insane. I mean, don't get me wrong. This thing looks absolutely amazing. It's certainly some that I would definitely want to pick up but uh you know I do have to spend my money on like food rent um you know electricity and things like that I can't just be throwing my money on this kind of stuff but this does look really awesome and if you have the money to drop on such a crazy diorama well there's your chance to go do that guys there's one with like a battle rifle there's one with a sword like red and blue sword and stuff like that so tons of different options for you guys out there but again spend your money wisely so when the flight actually closed down we had this tweet right here saying as of october 4th 10 a.m pacific standard time the halo infinite multiplayer technical preview has wrapped up to the spartans that joined us we couldn't be more thankful for your service here's the interesting part missed out but want to join in on the action next time fully sign up at halo insider and i was like next time now what i do actually think what they mean by next time is that probably there will be another flight throughout the lifespan of halo infinite i think it's gonna be like a reoccurring thing i don't expect to see another flight happening before the release of the game since it took two months essentially from the first flight that we had to this second flight 
And right now we're sitting at less than two months until the release of Halo Infinite. It's gonna be at least a month for 343 to dive through all the tickets and all the bugs and fix things up a bit. So I just don't really expect anything unless there's something that's absolutely needs to be tested out before the release of the game. I have a feeling Flight 2 was our last chance to play Halo Infinite before the release of the game. Though if we get any more news on it, I guarantee I'll show you guys that information. For the next bit of news guys, we have some information on the Halo Infinite event that's apparently just sold out in, like in record time and also an old Halo Pro that went to Call of Duty might be coming back to Halo. The official HCS Twitter recently tweeted this out saying that general admission and VIP tickets for the HCS kickoff or Major Raleigh 2021 are officially sold out. Mark your calendars, team passes will go on sale November 17th, We'll see you there. And Tashi did state that no more tickets will go on sale. There is no like post sold out sale, like tickets are gone. You can't do this event anymore if you haven't signed up already. I guess people just couldn't wait to get outside of their houses during quarantine. <laughs> we have some huge Halo Infinite news coming this week, guys. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel because we definitely will be covering it. Tashi tweeted this out last week saying that filming the ranked and competitive world premiere video today, back on October 6th, look for a full blog interviewing the sandbox, multiplayer and competitive insights team as well as a full gameplay start to finish dropping late next week. This is going to be huge because all we had for the flight were the social settings and a lot of people were kind of interested in well, what's going to be for the rank settings because I know a lot of people are not very fond of fully auto weapons being in rank as well as the radar might change as well and will there be BR starts? Honestly we'll just kind of have to wait and see. I have a feeling this news will drop either Thursday or Friday and if so when it does drop I guarantee I'll let you guys know on this channel as soon as it goes live. Though this in-game tip seems to kind of hint at what kind of settings we may see for competitive saying beware accidental friendly fire when playing competitive modes so there will be friendly fire on when it comes to playing competitive we also do know that, that grenade hit markers will be turned off for competitive as well and could we see a former halo pro returning from call of duty back to halo formal actually talks about this on his live stream what was i saying oh yeah i got a halo offer chat i did no cap i might take it I might take it and play the halo event no, I don't think I can tell you guys who it is. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm fucking, um, if I can like play under that team while also playing under Optic, then I can, I'll do it. I gotta make sure I can do both though. If you guys don't know who Formal is, he is a well-earned, well-received Call of Duty pro who run actual multiple world titles within that game. He actually used to be a competitive player during Halo Reach as well, and it's great to see possibly him coming back. Now, there's no word if he's going to be part of one of the partner teams. I doubt it because I think he might be just kind of joining in for the event. I don't know if he'd be going full on pro in Halo Infinite, which would be certainly cool. And a lot of these partner teams do not have a full roster at least announced yet, so can we see him joining up with some classic Halo pros? Potentially. But again, we'll just have to wait and see if we get any more information on this. If we get any more roster reveals from the partner team that's going to be taking part of the kickoff event for HCS. And then for the last bit of news here, guys, we have highlights from last week. This is from the community. Crazy things that have happened that I really want to show off to you guys. We have an insane world record sniping drill within Halo Infinite, as well as an absolutely insane flag cap for Mint Blitz as well that I just need to show you guys. Now here's Mint Bliss showcasing probably the most unique way for you to capture the flag. So yeah, that's rather insane. And here we have the Twitter user, The Milkway, which if you guys haven't been following this guy on Twitter, you definitely need to. He's been pulling off some insane things on Twitter, like the world record for snipe drills within Halo Infinite. You have to see this, guys. Sixty-eight thousand five hundred and ten points. The world record, guys. This thing is absolutely insane. It went absolutely off. He actually used the controller for this one as well, and actually used left trigger to do the aiming rather than using the right stick, like I do for bumper and jumper. I've tried this, guys, and doing the right stick aiming is super clumsy trying to get the high score for this. But if you kind of modify your controller in a certain way, you can do just fine with it. And well, that's everything that happened in the last week of Halo, guys. If you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I got a link to all my Halo news information. 
videos we've been uploading daily about. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.